Um, thanks, Raj and Andy. Uh, so I'm going to give you a very quick update on CXM, what we've been doing and what, what's coming up. Um, it's quite a lot of stuff coming up um, in the next release. Um, and then I'll be talking about the business account later this afternoon, so we'll, we'll touch on that later. Um, so straight into it, a um, couple of new notable features. Um, being able to send a, or an email sent to a user when they're sent a message in CXM. Uh, so this is the first of many improvements we're looking to make around messaging and assignments, so collaboration in CXM, uh, particularly for staff members. So when a general inquiry comes in and it's not automatically routed to the team uh, and it needs to go to, um, a message getting sent to a back office uh, staff member and then them receiving an email prompting them to come in and see, is this case something I need to pick up? Um, and also creating a case from the dashboard, um, ways of making it quicker for staff to raise cases when um, the person raising it might be anonymous. We're trying to make it quicker and easier for a staff member to raise a case when someone rings up on the phone. Um, previously, you'd have to search for the uh, person that was on the phone, um, but we're acknowledging that not every transaction um, requires a person record or a customer record to be associated with it, especially with GDPR, um, needing to store personal data against a case when it might be a trivial, um, or maybe not a trivial thing, but a quick thing like uh, reporting fly tipping or making a complaint that's anonymous. You just want to do that quickly and easily. Um, so now when you go to the new case button um, and you find the workflow that you need to raise, you can now search for that person there and then rather than having to go through and do search in the long-winded way. Um, and then there's only one field there at the moment because when you click continue, it'll take you off to your X form and you'd fill out the form on behalf of the customer on the phone. And then the other feature we mentioned was when you send a message to another staff member, uh, they receive an email. Um, so this is, as mentioned, around staff members collaborating with each other. So this is a message thread um, as opposed to a timeline message. So going into there and clicking new message. And then I'd search for the staff member who I think is going to be picking up this case. And then you'll notice at the top there's a, uh, a blue bar which says um, that only individually selected members will be notified by email. So groups won't be notified. And then when I send that message, uh, Bob will receive an email prompting him to log into CXM. It will tell him in the subject or in the email content what um, the case type is about and who sent him the message and when it was sent. So uh, what's coming up um, soon? Uh, so the first thing, I'm going to show you a, a very quick video of um, what we're calling case type import improvements. But essentially, that is making it easier for you to share workflows in the Jardu library. And we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, organization accounts, also known as business accounts, um, as I mentioned, we're looking at that this afternoon. Um, Pitney Bowes Confirm, so that is a, a system for highways um, to raise issues such as potholes. Um, we've already got integration with that, and this is about making that two-way, so effectively um, doing the full loop back to the customer when the pothole is fixed, then going back to them and updating them. Um, and we've been working with Birmingham City Council on that. Um, showing or hiding the Create Person button on the dashboard. Um, so this is to ensure that you're not creating duplicate person records, essentially. So you're making sure that you always search for the person um, before you create them, which makes sense. Um, and then finally, soon you'll be seeing um, on your CXM timelines, um, if you are inactive for 10 minutes, then you'll get a warning modal which says, are you still there? And you'll be prompted to... Um, to click the button. OK, so we're going to have a look at the, um, the case type import improvement very quickly. Um, we've got a, a very uh, rough and ready workflow that we're going to import uh, called general appointment. I've got the general appointment case type. Um, it's very basic in terms of its statuses and transitions. I have a form which has got four fields, uh, the request a name, the preferred day, the preferred time, and a message about booking this uh, appointment. And I have another field, which is uh, I can edit the appointment date and time. I've got two rules. 
I've got a rule which um, assigns the case to the appointments group. I have another rule which, at a certain date, um, sends an appointment reminder to the appointment manager um, role assigned to the case. And then finally, uh, I have an email that goes out which pulls content um, from the case. And what I'm now going to do is I've now opened up my target environment. So this could be another council's CXM environment, and I'm going to import that case type. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, find the file that I want to upload. And this is now the modal you'll see when you have elements in the workflow you're importing which do not match elements in your target CXM environment. Um, so those are uh, going across the top fields, um, choices within choice fields, roles, groups, and dates. So it's um, conceivable that you'd, have, you'd name your teams differently, um, you'd have different dates. Um, you might, based on your permission model, have different role permissions and therefore roles. Um, and all, all of those, we're saying they can be different um, based on your needs as a, a council, uh, but you should still be able to share workflows. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. Um, so what we're doing, first of all, is presenting all of the fields that can't be found in the target environment. And we have the option to create them or map them. Um, it's important that if they do exist, uh, but they have a different name, we map them because your data architecture is important from a, a reporting perspective. So if you took, um, if you had an SLA field which had a different name um, in the target environment, you'd want to map that for, for reporting purposes. You wouldn't want to have two SLA fields so that when you extracted your data, you'd, you're not reporting in a consistent way. So we'll go through and choose to map the first field, um, request a name to a field called contact name. And then it speeds up here. We go through very quickly and create and map the remaining fields. Uh, we have a choice field uh, which lists days of the week. Um, and there's a slight mismatch. I think we've got an extra day. Uh, so we're given the option to create that as a choice option. As an example. And then uh, one of the rules that we had referenced a role that didn't exist in the target environment. So we're given the option to create that role in the target environment or map to an existing role. We had another rule that referenced a group that didn't exist. So we've mapped that and we've done the same for the date. And then finally, we're presented with a summary of the import that we're about to do. And then we go ahead and we can now import that file. And that presumably then just automatically builds all the workflows. Yep. Um, lastly, there's a, a warning uh, that tells you all of the areas you just need to go through and check, do some due diligence to make sure um, that you can configure it how you want the uh, workflow to behave.